Spoilers! If you haven't seen the first episode of Prehistoric Planet and care about being spoiled about the inclusion of some critters, stay away from this video till you've seen it. This video was made by using my own knowledge, scientific papers, as well as the words of the people involved with the show itself. This is in no way meant to provide undue criticism towards the hard work that went into the show. In fact, there are very little instances where it may come off as me saying that something is wrong. As I am not an expert on every single group of animals, living or extinct, I used the words of other experts that may know the given organism better than I. Many criticisms are merely nitpicking and do not affect the quality of the overall show, and many are also debatable. I used the words provided by lead paleontological consultant Dr. Darren Nash via his Twitter threads discussing the designs and design philosophy of all the animals in Prehistoric Planet to construct a more fleshed out scientific discussion than the show provides. Obviously, the show is meant to be more visual and myth-breaking or trope-busting than purely informational or educational. It does deliver a good amount of scientific information, but only that which is absolutely needed in the context of the scene or episode. I think a lot of people wanted more thorough explanations of why some animals were reconstructed the way they were, especially considering how strongly updated they are with speculative but scientifically rooted displays, behaviors, and tissues because of the stranglehold the 80s and 90s nostalgia-fueled outdated reconstructions have on most dinosaur-related media. So, please take all this into consideration when watching my scientific reviews of Prehistoric Planet. I was not aware of any information that may come out after the writing, recording, editing, or publication of these videos that may counter any issues I bring up with the dinosaurs of Prehistoric Planet. As of the writing of this preamble, no full-length documentaries or discussion of the behind-the-scenes work on the series has come out. Some rather short tidbits on the location filming, philosophy, and computer animation work have been released, but this does not entail the full breadth of the project. Protostegid Turtle Design As Hank brings his kids to the island, the camera goes beneath the waves to reveal some protostegid turtles, the same turtles that appear on the beach once the dinosaurs reach the island. These guys go unnamed, though they look quite similar to Archelon, the largest protostegid and largest turtle to ever live, as well as protostega. Archelon itself lived before the time this series and episode was set, but many similar turtles to Archelon within the Protostegid group thrived right up until the end. Protostegids did not differ much in their overall body plan, so what we see here represented in this generic Protostegid is what is seen in many other Protostegids. They had soft shells like the leatherback turtles of today, with huge bony skulls with long hooked beaks. I'm no turtle expert, but everything here seems to be pretty spot on to what is known of these turtles. Thanks to these guys having relatively close living relatives, and thanks to turtles overall not changing too drastically over time, this one might actually be closer to what the real animal looked like than any dinosaur throughout the series. We see some baby turtles hatch and try to make it to the sea, only to be pounced on by the Tyrannosaurus young. These guys are live-acted sea turtle hatchlings. They look to be either olive ridley or loggerhead hatchlings, as such, they do not look like the offspring of protostegid turtles. However, it is never directly mentioned if these hatchlings belong to the protostegids we see on the beach, so you could headcanon your way out of this potential inaccuracy. To be clear, the groups of sea turtles alive today date back to before the time the series is set, so modern turtles were around at this time. The science used for this show is groundbreaking. The speculative nature of a lot of the stuff shown is equal parts necessary and representative of the real world. Two of the main consultants, Drs. Mark Witten and Darren Nash, helped to bring forth the modern dinosaur renaissance with their little paperback landmark book, All Yesterdays. 
I've made a two-part series of their work here on Edge that you can view to get a really good idea of the kinds of visions that team was trying to convey. With their work, they were not trying to say that speculation should be taken as gospel or that those who cautioned conservativeness in reconstructing long dead animals are wrong. Instead, their intention was to show the world that the animals of the past are as the animals of today, gross, complex, and alive. The world around us has only been around us for one to two million years. Before us, the modern paradigm has been around for 66 million years. Before that, there was an unfathomable expanse of time, 184 million years of time. If I wanted to really scramble your brain, there is an even more unfathomable expanse of time before that. But we're talking dinosaurs right now. For as alien as certain parts of the Mesozoic era may seem, the laws of nature retained their stranglehold. Animals of the Mesozoic had a much longer period of time to get gross and complex, so to think so narrowly as to only reconstruct the animals of the past as closely as their bones can say is to completely ignore everything we know about life. In fact, because of the much longer period of time that the dinosaurs had, it is nearly mathematically impossible to think they didn't get into weirder stuff than we see today. This seems to have been the driving force behind Prehistoric Planet, at least with the consultants and animators. I mean, we all know Favreau just wanted them to act like animals and look pretty. No shame or shade there. So what did you think of Prehistoric Planet? This video is way too hefty to only now get into the music, cinematography and directing or my criticisms therein. I have just gone through every single aspect regarding the science behind this show based on the very sparse information we have right now. Darren's tweets and the uncovered segments can only tell us so much. I think I can speak for everyone that we are eagerly awaiting a behind the scenes documentary on the documentary. In the meantime, we can only imagine. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.